This morning, the American Marketing Association announced the appointment of their new CEO, Russ Klein, who starts on August 11th, should infuse a fresh perspective to grow this premier worldwide organization into new territories. As per our earlier coverage, Russ brings tremendous experience at some of the top brands like Burger King, 7-Eleven and Arby's. He also has agency experience that should prove valuable in his new role. We had an opportunity to talk with him to find out what he thinks and here is what he had to say. Congratulations to you on your fantastic appointment as the CEO of American Marketing Association. Thanks very much. I couldn't be more excited. It is, it is amazing. I was thinking about it. What, what should I say? You are now the, your marketing marketing and the chief or head of marketers of marketing? <laughs> well, uh, Nick, for me, it's been a nexus of uh, my lifelong love of marketing science, both as uh, someone who tries to teach uh, best practices, uh, someone who is uh, always uh, curious to learn new best practices, uh, my credentials as a practitioner myself uh, across many consumer brands and, uh, uh, and my uh, desire now to uh, lead an organization, particularly a knowledge-based uh, organization in uh, certainly what is a knowledge economy uh, in about to go through the biggest throes of change probably in history. And so for uh, me, it's a uh, magical intersection of all the things I love, uh, including returning to Chicago uh, and uh, uh, being able to, uh, um, uh, I think, in a very natural and uh, authentic way, uh, bring my passion for marketing science um, to an organization um, and lead that organization through uh, these changing times. No, and this is wonderful, really. I mean, it's an honor and a privilege to be sitting in a, in a, in a position where you bring the intersection of, of academics and practitioners. And, and as you rightly said, we are at an inflection point in our economy, in our uh, society. Marketing is changing. And so, you know, previously things were a little bit more stable and the practices were studied by the academics. But right now what's happening is with all these changes, Unlike academics, which looks at backward, there's also a need to look forward. And Absolutely. so someone with your background, uh, with, with uh, training and experience in, at the helm of some of the greatest brands with uh, Burger King and 7-Eleven and others, I think you will bring and do a great job here. I'm, I'm absolutely positive. So how do you see things happening now? I mean, this change that has taken place, both in terms of the organization at AMA but also the change that is taking place within marketing itself. How do you see things moving forward and being different from the past? Well, uh, creative disruption, uh, disruptive innovation, uh, Metcalf's law of network uh, connectivity, uh, uh, externalities, Moore's law of uh, faster, cheaper, smaller, uh, uh, horizontal commerce, uh, disintermediation, uh, lateral economies of scale, uh, open source sharing, uh, even Rifkin's uh, theory of near uh, zero marginal costs, all of these forces are coming together, I think, to create an irreversible set of forces that will uh, create a rate of change, uh, a degree of change that business, commerce, uh, marketing has never experienced before. And uh, the uh, best uh, description I like to give is the, uh, the old joke um, uh, about uh, Stephen Wright, uh, where he says, uh, you know, when you're rocking back in a chair and you almost fall backward, but you catch yourself, that sort of uh, that sensation of fear of falling, uh, that I think is what the sensation of many uh, CEOs and CMOs will be feeling as they try to encounter a lot of these these uh, dynamic changes in the future. You, you've said some amazing words, and I think each word requires a paragraph-long description for average person. But what this does tell is, is that you rightfully said you are at the throes of a massive uh, upheaval, and, and, and any upheaval creates lots of opportunities. So for, for an average marketer, uh, is the AMA going to bring greater value moving forward the way you see things? 
well, this will be my job, is to lead a, the organization uh, both in terms of thought leadership as well as service leadership to our constituents. Uh, if we're not adding value to marketing practitioners and marketing academics uh, and marketing students for that matter, then uh, our reason for being uh, ceases to exist. Uh, so it will be critical for the AMA, which has the great fortune of being anchored by uh, academic uh, gravitas and academic credentials, uh, where really any academician who is looking to be published uh, in the most scholarly uh, um, uh, channels looks to the AMA uh, to do this. And so this is, uh, in effect, the, the, the Mickey Mouse of Disney uh, is the uh, academic credentials of the AMA. And we have to uh, preserve uh, those relationships, uh, foster those relationships between academics and practitioners, uh, working together to uh, create uh, light that we can throw on the path uh, ahead uh, for uh, our constituents. That will be the job of the AMA. And I think the way I'm looking at it, Nick, is if we just uh, try to adapt or respond to these changes, um, we might be successful. But if we embrace these changes and in fact try to become part of the changes, creating some of this change, uh, rather than just being a bystander, uh, then the AMA has a, a chance to become uh, a preeminent leader. And there won't be many, uh, I think, because uh, it's a very complex world to try to sort out. And we're fortunate at the AMA to have the best minds in the world uh, coming together uh, to advance best practices, uh, to solve problems that are posed to uh, marketing enterprises in the future. No, that is indeed wonderful. Uh, do you see any changes in the way AMA has been run? I'm, just, you know, um, there will be certain changes, obviously, when leadership changes. But do you see directionally? Is it is it uh, is it inclined to do things differently from the past, or do you intend to continue uh, the progress that has been made in the past by uh, Dennis Dunlap? Well, Dennis has done an outstanding job uh, at uh, the AMA for 15 years, and uh, he has had a long and successful career uh, approaching, I think, 45 years. So he's, uh, he has been around uh, this community and certainly been advancing the AMA banner uh, very uh, nobly for the last 15 years. And uh, it's really too early for me to say exactly what the nature of our change will be, uh, what type of direction we'll be pursuing. All I can predict is that the, the future will be very tumultuous. The forces I have described earlier are real. They are advancing rapidly, and that will necessarily cause the AMA to have to respond if it wants to be a leader uh, in that environment. So uh, the actual details of that change are going to be a function of me uh, being a great listener uh, in my early uh, weeks and months uh, on the job, uh, to put on a big set of ears uh, and to bring a lot of sharp pencils, to take a lot of notes, because there's tremendous, tremendous institutional wisdom uh, at the AMA, not only at the board level and among our volunteers, but also at the local chapter levels, where there's 76 uh, city-level uh, chapters and 250 collegiate uh, chapters, in addition to uh, outposts, if you will, in Shanghai and Mexico City, and uh, with an eye even towards perhaps uh, the Middle East and some other frontiers that uh, are really just green fields for the AMA. And um, not unlike uh, entertainment or rock and roll, American marketing. It's American marketing that is viewed as the best in the world. And it's uh, developing countries with developing middle classes around the world that uh, present an opportunity for the AMA to increase its footprint as well. Absolutely. With 118 countries uh, currently being involved and, and everybody's realizing and recognizing the role of marketing uh, because of the globalization. And you, know, you bring up uh, uh, Rifkin's book, and I think that's that's very indicative. Uh, now, in terms of um, 
marketing has become even more important because it's it's more tightly integrated with business strategy nowadays. Uh, I don't think you can be a CEO with a, a lack or or misleading concepts of marketing. It's just simply not possible. Do you see AMA going after non so-called marketing professionals in your membership? Oh, that's a great uh, question and I think a great suggestion. Uh, we have been talking already, uh, Dennis and I have been, uh, about the, the fact that marketing isn't just for marketers anymore. Uh, it is a, an enterprise-wide uh, capability that will define an organization's ability to be successful in the future. And so whether it comes directly from the CEO or whether it's simply a part of the culture of that enterprise, everyone needs to be a brand manager. And now we've said this in the past, but it's more true than ever because of how flat and how horizontal companies have become in, in proximity to their consumer. And so the experience for a brand, whether it's starts with the brand manager upstream or it ends with the salesperson on the front line, everyone has to be uh, marketing savvy, if you will, in order to advance the interest of a brand. Absolutely. And I, I see that all the time, and especially the entrepreneurial world is uh, on, almost all entrepreneurs need to be thinking that way. And so I wish you good luck and I hope you have a great and illustrious career ahead of you. And, uh, I would love to remain in touch with you and, and uh, we'll talk again. Please do, Nick. Thanks for having me. Thank you, Russ.